Hey there, welcome to our stream. Maybe you are joining us because you are re-watching the message, or maybe you're catching up because you missed it, or maybe you've never joined us before. This is so much more than just a message. It's a place for you. It's a place where you belong. We have a Zoom hangout after every youth service where you can meet new people and make new friends. So be sure to set aside 7 p.m. on Fridays, every Friday. You can hop onto any one of our platforms and come and join us because it won't be the same without you. But with that in mind, we are gonna get into the message from this past Friday. So lean in, grab a notebook to take some notes and let's be encouraged by Pastor Chris. Many businesses are closed. People are worried about income, bills that they need to pay. People have been laid off from work. There's a little bit of panic. Nations are in uproar, but we certainly need to cling to God and trust Him today. And the Word of God is our anchor. This is a picture of how life can sometimes work for all of us. Some people are just looking to be acknowledged as a life that actually matters. We need to make sure that we don't isolate ourselves. COVID-19 outside China has increased 13-fold, characterized as a pandemic. My father's house has many rooms. There's a room where we all gather together. Under one roof we worshipped and we sat together. This is home. Things look different now. They feel different because they are different. But our home remains the same. The church has many rooms. A room in my home and a room in yours. Stretching wider, reaching further, moving faster. This is home. separated but hearts gathered together. This is home. So as we go into the message, we're going to look at a scripture. And uh, if you're watching for the first time and you wonder why we call it a message, because we believe that God has a message from Him to you. He just happens to use me as a delivery service. You can call me take a lot if you want to. So as we get into the message... Um, I just, you know, I was thinking about stuff that I miss and anybody miss going to the movies? Like going to a cinema, watching movies. I love movies. I'm, I'm, I'm that guy who watches trailers. Like on my day off, if I'm cleaning the house, I'll put trailers on in the background. And like I know every new movie that's coming out because I just love movies. I love cinematography. And uh, in fact, when I first came on stuff, I used to actually edit videos and that's why I love it. Um, the reason I'm telling you this is that's not why I like going to the movies. In fact, I prefer watching movies at home on the couch. Yeah. The reason I like going to the cinema is for one reason, one reason only, yeah. popcorn. Come on. Movie popcorn is the best popcorn in the world. And I don't care who you are. Actually, second best. My wife makes the best popcorn at home. But other than that, movie popcorn is the best popcorn. Like you go there and it just smells so good. And then they dish it in the box and then you put your, you see your salt on it and you go into the movie. You know, I like movie popcorn so much. Once I went to watch a movie uh, with a friend of mine, Dennis, and we got to the movie and they had like this big date tub of popcorn. And not that we, we shared that one, that was just mine. I had enough popcorn for two people. Everybody judged me, Dennis judged me. I didn't care because I love popcorn that much. But my favorite part about popcorn is the toppings. Not because I like lots of different toppings, but because there's only one topping that you should ever put in popcorn and that's salt. Butter, butter. Butter salt. Butter salt. No, 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 no. Sorry. The only topping that you should ever put in popcorn is salt. You get people in the world who do weird things like put golden butter syrup. and cheese and char. Do you say golden syrup? It's delicious. With salt. Can we please pray for Carlito? By the way, I've got Carlito and Cam here. They're going to be responsive and say weird things. But you know, this is a safe space. You can be honest. If you like maple syrup on your popcorn too, then 
give us a thumbs up. But like I was saying, salt is the most important topping on popcorn. My wife is the opposite of me. We once went on a date and uh, you know when you go on a date, you're like, no, we'll share popcorn. <laughs> we'll share a seat, we'll share, you know? And um, I'll never forget this. I put my hand in the popcorn that she had gotten and she had just violated it with like salt and vinegar and cheese and chives and hmm. And for me at that moment, I said, I'm gonna love you as my wife despite your faults and despite what you like putting in popcorn. But I digress. But a digress. <laughs> but a popcorn. Oh. But here's the thing. Have you ever had popcorn without salt? In fact, have you had any food without salt? You know, you don't understand the value of salt until it's not there. The title of the message is simply this, be salty. You see, just like the salt on popcorn, it makes popcorn better. As Christians, we're called to be salty. And I know what you're thinking. No, 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 Chris, salty is a bad word. Actually, no. There might be some weird definitions of it, like to be angry or to get upset about something. I think that's the definition of salty. If it's not, you can correct me in the comments. Um, and hey, use the comments as we go into the message. It's a great opportunity to connect. It's a great opportunity to be responsive in the message. And uh, in fact, once you've in the message, be the title, be salty, why not send like a salt emoji? There's a salt emoji, right? Thanks. If there's not a salt emoji, just send us what you think is a salt emoji. Like I said, like the world today, they have a, a, a definition of what salty is. It means to be upset and angry about stuff. But you know, Jesus gives us a better definition of what it means to be salty. And it's found in Matthew 5, where Jesus is preaching. And it says this, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's you see, as Christians, we're called to be the salt and light of the world. That scripture goes on to speak about light, but for today, we're just focusing on salt because salt is vitally important. Yeah. And now when we read that, you're like, I can't believe Jesus called me salt. Salt is like so boring, <laughs> you know? It's like the stuff that's on the table. And, you, and it's just, and you're like, yeah, but if, if, if you don't have salt in food, it doesn't taste as nice. And whilst that's true, you've got to look at the context that Jesus was speaking into. Yeah, right. For us, when we hear salt, we think like popcorn topping, but salt is actually vitally important and extremely valuable in the first century when Jesus was speaking. See, in the first century, salt was the economic basis for a country. You know that there were wars fought over salt? And was more than that, it determined currency. In fact, Rome was, might have actually been a salt trading center at some point where the Roman Empire came from. And you know the word salary, the thing that your parents own, or maybe you have a job and you earn it, it it's derived from the word salt. It's called the salarium agreement. And what it was, it's, it, it's basically you would pay soldiers, Roman soldiers with money, but also with salt because it was so valuable. At one point, it was said that salt was more valuable than gold because it had more usefulness. And that's why you get the term, are you worth your salt? And the reason I'm telling you this is point number one is we are valuable and important. Just like salt, when Jesus says that people wouldn't have been offended or like that's so ordinary and everyday, they would have understood the importance and the value that salt had. And in 2020, there is still importance and there's still value in salt. You see, in the first century, salt was considered uh, valuable because it was used for seasoning food, obviously, but more importantly, it was used to disinfect and to preserve food. You see, you and I, we have a fridge at home, most of us. And when you go to the fridge and that would keep and preserve food, so you can go to the shops and you can put your meat in the fridge and your veg in the fridge and it wouldn't go off. Often the people back in the first century, particularly where Jesus was from, they would do a lot of fishing. And in order to preserve the fish, they would cover it in salt because salt would act as one of disinfectant, but more importantly, it would preserve the fish. And more than that, you see, because they didn't have cooler bags, if they wanted to go to war, soldiers had to have a lot of salt. Therefore, salt determined how powerful your army was because it determined how far it could go and how long it could go for. And we need to remember that, you know, just like salt was a preservative, we are called to be a preserver of righteousness. How many of you know, if you look in 2020, preserving righteousness is very, very difficult. Yeah. As we go through life trying to live right, righteous simply means living right according to God's word. You know, some people say, well, what do you mean living right? I just choose how to live right. No, no, no. God's word dictates how we should live and we should follow God's word. And being a Christian in 2020 is becoming even more difficult because Christianity is constantly under attack. 
In fact, somebody sent me a video the other day, and uh, there was a guy who went to a, a march in America, and they were they were they were they were protesting something, and he was interviewing people, and he came across one of his uh, somebody he knows, and they were having this conversation, and they said, you know, if you were to say something against somebody who was Muslim, you would be considered Islamophobic. If you were to say something against somebody Jewish, it would be considered anti-Semitic. But there is no word for saying something anti-Christian. Wow. In fact, there is. It's called freedom of speech nowadays. And people will use their freedom of speech to, to counteract what God's word says. However, if you were to take a stand, you don't have freedom of speech anymore as a Christian. Instead, you are considered bigoted, you're considered narrow-minded, and you're considered intolerant. Isn't it scary that that's the world that we live in? Yeah. However, we shouldn't be surprised by this because look what it says in 2 Timothy 4. It says, For a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. They will reject the truth and chase after myths. How many of you know that's so true of the society we live in today? People are no longer looking for the truth. They're too busy living out their own truth. They're trying to figure out, well, hey, what suits me and how can I get the Bible to fit into my lifestyle? The Bible doesn't fit into your lifestyle. The Bible teaches you what your lifestyle should be. It's called having a biblical worldview. And if we as Christians, we want to preserve righteousness, we first need to be righteous and delve into God's word. But we need to be willing to take up the cross. We need to be willing to say, I'm going to pay the price and it might be difficult, but I'm going to continue to reach people. I'm going to continue to develop my convictions and stand up for what I believe in. You know, the scripture goes on to say that it's going to, we might suffer a little bit because of it. And you know, our Instagram profile might suffer. People might call us names. People might not want to associate with us. But at the end of the day, we've got to stand before God and say, God, I preserved righteousness on the earth. And that's the thing with preserving righteousness. You know, salt is like a disinfectant. Sometimes it's uncomfortable. Anybody ever got a cut before and then they put that stuff in it, the, the stinging stuff, the Dettol. There's, there's a medical term for Dettol. And, not the, an antiseptic, that's the word. And you put an antiseptic, you put a disinfectant in your skin. What ends up happening, it stings at first because it's removing the stuff that is dangerous in life. And as we preserve righteousness, what well, it might do in our own lives, firstly, is it might end up hurting a little bit because it removes the things that are dangerous and deadly. But as we go into the world, that's what we're called to do. We're called to preserve it. And it may feel uncomfortable. It might not be glamorous, but God has called us to preserve righteousness in the world. And scripture says something interesting right at the end. It says, they will reject the truth and chase after myths. Notice how it doesn't say a truth, but the truth. And we need to always remember this is that the reason we need to stand up for truth in righteousness is because of this is because the truth is not a concept it's a person and his name is Jesus John 14 verse 6 says this Jesus answered I am the way and the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me and when we can preserve righteousness when we can stand up for the truth the person that is Jesus then what will happen in our lives is just like the armies that I told you earlier, we will be able to preserve righteousness for longer, which means we can go further, we can reach more people, we can benefit more people and God's word will be heard when we decide to preserve righteousness and step out for what God has called us to do. And before we go back to this point number two, I want to go back to the scripture because an interesting sentence, it says this, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? So point number two is this, stay salty. We need to be willing to stay salty so that God can use us for purpose, to preserve righteousness on the earth. You know, the thing about preserving righteousness, like I mentioned earlier, was salt is also used to disinfect and sometimes it's uncomfortable. Sometimes God, will, if we're salt, it would cause some discomfort in our own lives as we, as we fix the areas that would cause us more harm, but rather be uncomfortable than it having long-term effects. And that's why it's important to stay salty. You see, the Bible is a book that is full of examples, full of parables, full of principles, full of commandments that will all help us to stay salty. And as we read the Bible, there are many scriptures that will help us stay salty. So today what we're going to do is we're going to do something a bit different for the second point is we're going to actually take a look at one of those scriptures and we're going to study that scripture and see how we can remain salty or stay salty. Salty. Hopefully what this will do, it would show us that it's easier to study scripture than we think and it can be something that we do daily. 
So uh, we're obviously going to need to go to Scripture. And as much as it's going to come up on the screen, if you have a paper Bible, I encourage you to grab it. If you have to run to your room and grab it, maybe it's close to you, you can grab it. But I encourage you to use your paper Bible. I'm going to be using my laptop because one of the two gentlemen behind me left their paper Bible at home. I'm not going to tell you who. Thanks, Carlita, for your honesty. Just as you grab your Bible today, we're just going to take a look at a couple of verses in the Bible. We're going to study it. But if you want to learn how to study and interpret the Bible, Pastor Andre has a phenomenal course. One of the be- in fact, the best course I've ever done. If you haven't done it, you need to do it. And it's free of charge. All you have to do is jump on the app. So you go to one of the app stores, download the app, and it's free of charge under the Discipleship College section of the app store. So make sure you go, make sure you download it, study it. You can do it in a week. You can binge it in a day. But it'd be something that I would encourage you to go over a few times because it'll help us study and interpret the Bible correctly, which will ultimately help us stay salty. Psalm 19 verse 97 to 104 says this, Oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. Verse 98, your commands are always with me and make me wiser than my enemies. I have more insight than all my teachers. Some of you are like, yes, amen. (laughs) For I meditate on your statutes. I have more understanding than the elders, for I obey your precepts. I have kept my feet from every evil path so that I might obey your word. I have not departed from your laws, for you yourself have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Verse 104, the last one. I gain understanding from your precepts, therefore I hate every wrong path. Man, that's a pretty interesting eight verses. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at it verse by verse and see what we can find in it that will help us stay salty. So it starts with, oh, I love your law and I meditate on it all day long. We need to meditate daily is what the psalm tells us. And the word meditate is pretty interesting. It, says, it means this, it means to think about, it means to study and have a conversation or to talk about. And we need to do that with God's Word. We need to think about it. We need to study it. We also need to be willing to have conversations about it. And not just once a week, not just on Fridays and Sundays, but we need to do it continually. Like the Psalm says all day, it needs to be something that's constant in our lives. Here's my question is, what's on our hearts and what's on our lips? Is it on our hearts? Is it in our minds? Is it coming out of our lips? When was the last time we picked up the phone and said to someone, hey, I read this today and it was amazing. Look at what God showed me. I don't mean when was the last time I shared an Instagram post? When was the last time you heard a message from one of the campus pastors at church or you jumped on one of the messages online and you said, hey, this is what I heard last week. When was the last time you read the Bible for yourself and said, this is what God showed me and I can't wait to tell my friends. What does your conversation sound like? Are they about the latest Netflix show, the latest Marvel movie? Or are they about God and His precepts? Are about God and His commandments? You see, the Bible also mentions the word laws there. It says, oh, how I love your law. You see, what we need to understand about the laws in the Bible was they were not there to restrict us. In fact, Pastor Trace preached a great message at the Centurion campus this past weekend on it. But you know, the laws were here to protect us, to show us God's wisdom, and ultimately to help set us apart. That's to be holy, that's to stay salty and to live life right. So when we see God's words, it shouldn't, it shouldn't cause us to, to, to be negative about ourselves and say, man, look at, look at how, how constrictive God is. Instead of saying, hey man, there's God's wisdom in His laws. God's laws have set us apart and they help me so to be so salty. Yeah. Looking at verse 98, it says, this, your commands are always with me and make me wiser than my enemies. I have more insight than all my teachers for I meditate on your statutes. It doesn't mean that you're going to know more about physics than your teachers, but we're going to take a look at what this means. And I think if anything from those two verses, what we need to take is this, it's that the Bible is key. The Bible is all we'll ever need. It gives us insight to spiritual matters. It gives us insight to to wisdom, to success, to God's principles, to managing our finances, managing our money, to running a family, to how we should respond to our parents as teenagers, how we should set our lives up, how we should date people, the friendships we should have. The Bible is key and it is everything we will ever need for living life right. Like I said, when the Bible says insight, it doesn't mean that you'd be able to know more about physics than you your teachers, but it does mean this. It means that spiritually in your day-to-day, in your practical lives, you can grow by applying God's Word. And as we apply God's words practically to our schoolwork, to our family, to our home setting, as we look at God's commandments daily and it changes our lives daily as 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 He teaches us through His commandments, what ends up happening is we begin to gain wisdom. 
You see, the scripture goes to say that word meditate again, to think about, to, to talk about. And you see, it's repeated there, and it's not by accident. Repetition draws attention to that God's word is not meant to be read passively, but it's meant to be studied. We're meant to meditate on it. We're meant to look at it consistently because God's word changes our lives. And as we apply God's holy word, not only does it change our lives, not only does it show us how to be successful, it not only does it give us wisdom, but it helps us to remain salty. You see, it says we'll have more insight and practical than our teachers. Verse 100 says, I have more understanding than the elders for I obey your precepts. You know what that tells me is that our elders are the people older than us, obviously. But it tells me that wisdom is not determined by the amount of time we've been on the earth. It's not an experience thing, but instead it's a obedience thing. When you're obedient to God's word, when you apply God's word, that's where wisdom is found. That's the vision for our year. Don't forget that. As we apply God's wisdom and wisdom is not just spiritual, it's practical everyday wisdom in our lives that will help us. You know that when we are spiritual, we also need to be practical. Every great biblical figure was that. Jesus was both a practical carpenter and the savior of the world. Yeah. Noah practically built an ark before he spiritually provided salvation for humanity. In our lives, we need, to, we need to apply wisdom so that we can help the practical areas of our lives as well as the spiritual areas of our lives. Is this helping anyone? Yeah. It's, pretty, it's actually pretty simple. As you go through line by line, there's something that we can take out. Verse 101 says this, I have kept my feet from every evil path so that I might obey your word. You know, it's interesting. It says this in, at the beginning. It says, I have kept my feet. You know, the word kept in the ESV, I think it says hold back. It, it actually means just to restrict and to restrain. And, it's, and so the, the psalm is saying, I have restricted, I have restrained my feet from every evil part. And our feet is how we walk through life. So what that line, that, that, that one verse tells me, this is we need to apply restrictions in our life and in our walk to keep the commandments of God so that we can stay salty. We need to ask ourselves, we need to go to God and say, God, what areas of my life do I need to restrict? Most smartphones nowadays have a function called screen time where you can restrict the amount of time you spe spend on your phone. Maybe that's something we need to implement in our lives. Maybe we need to restrict the people that we're speaking to. Maybe we need to restrict the influences in our lives. Maybe we need to take some time and say, I'm gonna restrict the amount of time I spend on Netflix. Do you know how I know restrictions work? Because we spend most of the year under restrictions to help us protect lives. If we can change our lifestyles for a virus and Maybe you've lost someone to COVID. I know I have. I'm not, I don't mean to take anything away from COVID, but I want you to take a look at this principle. You see, if we can apply restrictions in life, if we can say, hey, I need to restrict certain areas in my life in order to save lives because I can see the result of the virus. How many of you know we need to restrict certain areas of our lives? We need to be willing to change our lifestyles like we did under lockdown to prevent our eternities from being lost and saving our souls. Because as much as there might be a pandemic right now when it comes to the virus, there's a pandemic called sin. And if we don't apply the restrictions, if we don't change our lifestyles, it could cost us our saltiness. So the commandments, they help us stay salty. But then that, that verse goes on to say this, I have not departed from your laws for you yourself have taught me. Is this helping anyone? Yeah. You, you know the word there where it says, uh, I have not departed. That means to obviously depart, but it's, it speaks in a negative sense of rebelling or declining. And so often that's how it starts. Before we fall away and we lose our saltiness, it begins with a slow decline. We start here, but we slowly go one degree off and then two degrees off. And then before you know, we're 90 degrees off. Yeah. I think that's how maths works. 90 degrees off and we're going 180 degrees off and we're going in the complete wrong direction. And we need to make sure that we don't decline. And the way we can prevent our decline is being taught from the laws. The word taught means to teach, but the, the Hebrew actually gives us the imagery of being pointed out. And so often when you read God's Bible, the Lord, what it ends up doing is it teaches us by pointing out areas on our lives that we need to yield to God. We need to stop and ask ourselves, maybe you want to write this down in a notebook, what areas do I need to yield to God? What areas is God's word trying to point out in my life? Is it an area of sin? Is it an area of pride? Is it an area of addiction that God's word is trying to point out that says, hey, you need to fix this and God's willing to help you when we apply God's word word. We need to make sure we defend against those areas so we don't lose our saltiness. Yeah. And then it goes on to say this, it says, how sweet are your words 
to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Is God's word sweet in our life? It needs to be the, the sustenance of our life. Not cereal and future life in the morning, but God's word needs to sustain our life. You know, the word there for taste is the way we get the word palate, which means the inside of our mouth. But it also means what you have a palate or a liking to. And we have to ask ourselves, do we have a palate for God's word or inappropriate jokes? Do we have a palate for building hope, faith and life? Or do we have a palate for negativity and destruction? Are we using our platform? Are we using our mouth to build people up or to break them down because it makes us feel better and it hides the insecurities in our lives? We need to make sure that we have a palate for God's word. And the last one says this, I gain understanding from your precepts for I hate every wrong path. You know, when salt gets thrown out, it gets thrown onto the wrong path. And we need to make sure that when we gain understanding, it helps us to stay salty, to apply God's word in our life. You see, studying the Bible isn't that hard. And if you take anything from this message, I hope that you take this, that you can take a couple minutes, read eight verses, and you can get lots of input from it because that's God's Word. You see, reading God's Word is not about education. It's about inspiration. It's about getting God's revelation. If you're going to read God's Word and study it, pray before you start always, like we pray before every single message. But I want to encourage you this week, find a scripture. Maybe you look at Psalm 119 and you read, nine, you read eight verses a day and you study them and you see what God speaks to you about as you study the Psalms. But don't reserve studying God's Word for Fridays and Sundays. Do it daily. It'll help you stay salty. You know, I did a little bit of research on what it means or what, where salt comes from. Have you ever been in the ocean and like swallowed water? Yes. <laughs> Man, it's like, I thought I was drowning at one point, okay? I mean, I remember the one time we were on holiday and I live in Joburg, obviously. And um, we don't have an ocean here. And um, I remember once that we went to the ocean, once we were on holiday with our family, we were visiting family overseas. And uh, I was in the ocean and the water changed color. So it's like this nice blue and then went to like this really dark greeny color. And Tony's going, ooh, because he knows exactly what happened. And I didn't know, I was like, oh, what's that? And as I walked, the reason the color of the water changed color was because the depth changed and the darker color was because it was deeper. And I slipped and I thought I was gonna dry and I was swallowing salt water. And I think that's probably the first and last time I swam in the ocean. In fact, I think I put my feet in once or twice since then, but that's been it. But I'll, just, I'll never forget, what was scary was not the fact that I was drowning, was every time the salt touched my tongue, it made me feel worse. Yeah. It made me feel like I was drowning more. I always wondered, why is the water in the ocean salty? In fact, that's often where we get our sea salt from, it's in the name sea salt, but it's from, it's from salt rocks found on the ocean. And that makes the, the water salty. And you know that rocks on land are a major source of salts dissolved in seawater. So the runoff from the rocks on the land affects the sea and it makes it salty. And you know, in our lives, if we want to say salty, we need to go to the rock. Like it says in 1 Peter 2 verse 6, for this is contained in scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a choice stone, that's Jesus Christ, a precious cornerstone. And he who believes in him will not be disappointed. You see, that's an extremely powerful verse. It's an extremely important verse. But we need to understand that if we want to be salty in our lives, the thing that makes our life salty is going to the rock, going to the cornerstone, because He won't disappoint us. He won't put us to shame. Instead, He lifts us up and He'll change our lives. And if you've never had an opportunity to say yes to Jesus, you've never said, hey, I want Jesus in my life. I didn't realize that I was valuable. I didn't realize that I was important to God. You're so important that there's nobody like you to do the purpose that God has for you. Jesus saw the value in you that He was willing to sacrifice His own life so that we could have our life. He disinfected sin once and for all and He preserved our lives just like salt does. Maybe you used to walk with God, but you stopped reading His Word. You stopped guarding your path and you went like the Psalm says, down the wrong path because you didn't guard your steps. You didn't restrict areas in your life that needed restricting. Today is an opportunity for you to come back to God, for God to use you your life, for you to say, hey God, I'm coming back. I'm choosing you again because God's arms are wide open. Yeah. So I'm gonna pray for you. And uh, if that is you, you can keep your eyes open. You can close your eyes, whatever you feel more comfortable. But I'm gonna pray and I'm gonna commit your lives to God, to 
Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for every single person who's made a decision to say yes to you today. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy that removes the sin, the guilt and the shame of our lives. Today, we build our lives in the foundation of your rock, the cornerstone that is Jesus. Remove the guilt, the sin and the shame, but give us a future that is designed by you. Today, we choose to be the salt in the world that we would change the word, that we'd preserve righteousness. If we're coming back, I pray that you give us a fresh start, Lord, that we would now guard our steps, that we would keep our life salty with you at the center. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, man, if you made that decision, what an amazing decision you've made. We believe that your whole eternity is changed. We believe that you've got a savior to do life with and we'd love to do this journey with you. So if you made that decision, you can just uh, head over to our website and click the tab if you're watching there. If you're watching one of our social media platforms, somebody's gonna send a link in the comments so you can send us a DM because we'd love to connect with you. We don't want you to do this journey alone. We say this at the end of every service, but there's three things that you can do. If you've made that decision, you're making it again or you attend every Friday and it's this. It's read God's word. God's word is His truth. We just did a little bit of a Bible study and I hope it doesn't just stay here. I pray that as you go into the week, we'd begin to study God's word more and more and more and more. And then uh, if you don't have a paper Bible, maybe you can download version. It's a great app that gives us access to the Bible, reading plans. You can even read together as a group. The second thing we can do is pray. Pray doesn't have to be complicated. There's no right or wrong prayer. In fact, prayer is a conversation and communication with God. And if you want to communicate with God, sometimes it just means saying, hey, God, please help me. Hey, God, thank you for your grace. Hey, God, I need some guidance in an area. And that's as simple as it is. And lastly, come back. Make sure you come back next week, Friday. We've got another stream and it won't be the same without you. I always say that because I mean it, because God has a plan for your life. You're not here by accident if you've stumbled upon the screen and somebody invited you, but God wants to change your life. So make sure you come back next week. That's the most important thing. In fact, don't wait till next week. You've got our weekend services. You can watch on one of the platforms. The service times are gonna come up. They start from eight, they end at five and they are gonna be epic and they're gonna be amazing. And hey, don't forget we have our Zoom call. If you made a decision to follow Jesus, you know what your next step should actually be is to join us on the Zoom. We're not gonna point you out. We're not gonna single you out, but we just wanna connect with you connect you with some good people who are just trying to figure this thing out called life, who are just trying to be salty together. So they're going to bring up a QR code and we'll see you on the Zoom. But until next week, peace out.